Ladies and gentlemen, we have a first here at Cinema Sins. I'm knocking off a sin for the combination of Disney and Pixar logos being a blessedly brief 10 seconds, which means this is the first film ever to start off with negative sins. Mind blown. Hey, wait a minute. Why is the M so hard to eat? This monster ate the other M just fine. And since when did letters become sentient beings? Like right before the L in film was eaten? Now, wait a minute. This soccer ball was clearly under the bed in the previous shot. The skateboard would have made more sense. Now the skateboard isn't even here. Hell, the toy racetrack isn't even here. And definitely not a half-played game of jacks. It could let in a child. Evil guy is evil because everything about his character design and introduction lighting tells me he's evil. You're going in there because we need this. Boss wastes natural resources just to demonstrate what the natural resources are. Also, how did monsters ever figure out that screams power things? How did they first collect it? And this seems like something you should have an abundance of, what with wave files and digital copies and whatnot. Weird monster penis painting. Car with teeth inspires the two worst Pixar movies ever. Map of the World was also drawn using children's screams. It seems like Sully is so good at this, he should easily be able to work a little overtime and help get the city's supply of scream back up to normal levels. I mean, how long does it take to get the scream? Like, a minute? If you extrapolated that over a typical eight-hour shift, you should be able to get the city's power back in no time. So, uh, are we going anywhere special tonight? I don't understand dating in the monster world. Mikey apparently is a completely different species with no discernible genitalia. Mike leaves himself three post-it reminders to file his paperwork, but if the first two reminders didn't help, it's kind of a sin that he'd think the third one would. I'll tell you what's really creepy, is how they got this kid's picture to put in a file. Also, Monsters Inc. spells yield wrong. That's true for the corporation and the movie. Movie rips off the slow motion walking sequence from all the movies. Eyes that fall out this easily are maybe not so ready to be eyes. This scene where they realize the girl is too old to be scared and they call for the dead door demolition team makes me wonder, how did they get the doors for newborn kids? Where do they come from? Who builds them or creates them here in Monsterland? How do they even know of a new human child's existence? Kids these days, they just don't get scared like they used to. Sure, kids were exposed to more things even back in 2001, but I find it hard to believe there's so much more used to scary things that actual monsters coming in the rooms don't bother them. Cute design on this monster with the hard hat and the little eye tentacle holes, but doesn't that negate some of the hard hat's effectiveness when something could fall and smash into his eyes? Clearly no sock on this guy's back as he struts out of the kid's room, but then suddenly a sock shows up like magic when he starts walking forward. Monster cup sizes range from 2 ounce to 20 ounce to 115 ounce, and that's it. You either drink hardly enough, the perfect amount, or way too f***ing much. Oof. Hey, can I borrow your odorant? Yeah, I got, uh, smelly garbage or old dumpster. In this world where we've seen two toothbrushing scenes, Monsters, Inc. wants to have it both ways and be the opposite of the human world for just this one joke. I know, we're dicks. This is a cute moment, but the movie literally hinges entirely on the notion that Sully is somehow incapable of putting this child inside her room and closing the door before she slips back out. Randall just happens to be implementing his secret evil plan on the very night Sully stayed behind to cover Mikey's paperwork. Also, didn't everybody just get off work? Why is Randall so dumb as to do his shady scaring, like, five minutes after quitting time? How fast is it even physically possible for a workplace this large to empty out? Okay, come on. First, we didn't see Boo at all during the entire last 30 seconds of panic by Sully. Second of all, he seriously can't feel some toddler-sized thing hanging off his back. Wow, with all the stuff we just watched, it's amazing the timing of Randall's exit from the bedroom. Just one second or more sooner, and he'd have busted Sully running through the floor with a child in the bag. Also, this is Boo's door, and she's not in there. So what the hell was Randall doing all this time while Sully was running around the locker room? We learn later he wanted to kidnap her, so was he just chilling and waiting? Where did he assume she'd gone? How did he know when to stop chilling and waiting? Why is the system built in such a way that one cannot quickly recall a door that's been sent away recently? That seems like a really stupid design flaw. Plot-related design flaw, but still. I went back to get your paperwork, and there was a door. What? She can't hear them? Sully freaks out over Boo touching him when she's touched him a million times already. You think he's gonna come through the closet and scare you? They sit this kid up so it appeared she wasn't scared of anything, but she apparently really is scared of Randall. So why was she so unafraid of Sully when he walked through the door? Man, think about what her parents are going through right now. If you think about this movie from their perspective, it gets a lot more lovely bones than you want it to. Um, the candles are still burning. Jeez, Hollywood has terrible flame discipline. Good thing monsters have both the same physiology and toilet fixtures as humans. Randall! Oh, thank goodness! What are we gonna do about the child? Randall's worker buddy openly discusses the kid he's ultimately responsible for inside a public restroom. The front page! Jeff Fungus Ex Machina. Super observant monster is momentarily super unobservant for comedy's sake. Toilet paper sticks to your heel after using the bathroom cliche. Although, when I think about it, how? They were in the cleanest bathroom in the history of bathrooms. Or so help me! 
Oh, hi. We're rehearsing uh, a scene for the upcoming company play called uh, Put That Thing Back Where It Came From or So Help Me. Mike and Sully's co-workers believe this. Celia shows up out of nowhere so that she can yell at Mikey and Randall can figure out that they were at the sushi place last night. The articles on this newspaper are the biggest bunch of nonsense we've ever seen here at Cinema Sits. And that's saying something. The writer even bothered to write ums and uhs in this thing. Sure, it could be a joke, but what's not a joke is somebody was able to snap this photo of Boo while she rampaged the sushi restaurant. I know you want to keep giving Randall reasons to use his abilities, but Mike had a huge head start here and didn't even know himself where he was running, so this bullshit is impossible. It's 11.55 a.m. right now, and a mere two minutes ago with no significant passage of time whatsoever, it was 8.50. Now, normally this would be a really stupid nitpick that has nothing to do with the quality of the movie. And in all fairness, it still doesn't. And a ton of you will try to think the worst thing ever commented on YouTube ever because of it. But in this case, it's important because the next plot development entirely hinges on the scare floor going to lunch in five minutes. How are they going to lunch when they just got here? Kid has been wandering free in Monsters, Inc. without one monster seeing her. Can we get an autograph? CDA assholes appear so you'll think Sully's in trouble, but then become fanboys? which also allows Boo to once again avoid capture. These CDA guys were all going number two at the same time. Yeah! <laughs> Will you stop making Boo laugh? That's weird, because the last time Boo made the lights go out, it was because she was crying, not laughing. She's been laughing the whole damn time she's been in this building and nothing happened. Randall actually thinks Mikey is Boo for some reason. Why does Randall ever bother becoming visible? Why not stay invisible and search the entire floor before revealing yourself? Randall manages to increase his distance between he and Sully, despite Sully running and Randall going the exact same speed. Out of nowhere, and super conveniently discovered secret door isn't childproof. Look, this door closes on its own, but also somehow knows to wait until after you hesitate, then finally enter the tunnel. Jesus, you had no problem carrying the crate earlier when you first kidnapped Mikey, so why is this any different? And with two monsters, no less. Yeah, so this scream extractor sounds evil, but the only reason is that they're going to have to kidnap kids. But why do they need to do that? Why not bring the machine to the scare floor? Or make it smaller, for Christ's sake? What's different about this machine that's any more unethical than running in and scaring little kids for their screams? Furthermore, Randall's actions on the night Boo came over to the monster world don't really make sense now. If the whole reason he set the door up that night was to kidnap Boo, then why didn't he just take her, instead of stopping midway to get some scream tubes? Didn't he have plenty near the secret door? Or the secret evil lab where he's testing this machine out? Scream Extractor is plugged into a place where it is easily unplugged without detection. Goodbye, Monsters Inc. Roll credits. No, 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 sir, you don't understand. Uh, now, show these monsters what? how no, it's done. No, I... Person who has something really important to say is constantly interrupted by interrupting douchebag cliche. <laughs> yeah, so why isn't this kid's fake recorded screams worth some scream energy again? It's midichlorians, isn't it? That wasn't real. It's just a... I was just... Recording of Sully Scare just happens to be rewound and paused on the perfect spot, and contains all the important story information. Boo! Boo! Banished to the human world, so naturally the first thing they bump into is a monster from their own world. Snow cone? <laughs> no, 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 don't worry. It's Lemon. Monsters, Inc. shows it has the bravery to insert a much-needed pee joke into the script. Wasteland? I think you mean Wonderland! Marketing. Sully's sudden violent outburst leads to the very answer to the problem he was just outbursting about. Doesn't that matter? Sully says nothing because he knows the movie needs all the runtime it can get. Damn it, Randy Newman, that music is almost exactly the same piece of music you did in The Natural. You didn't think I'd notice, did you? Luckily, at this exact moment, kids are being scared by monsters right now. <laughs> they hadn't started doing this yet? Sullivan got what he deserved. Sullivan was twice the scarer you will ever be. Bullshit conflict between two villains intended to distract and buy time for the hero cliche is bullshit. Sully doesn't remember how easy this secret door is to open. Mike? Sully had a huge head start, and all the kids in the entire village were already being scared, not to mention the security breach the company just endured with Sully showing up out of nowhere. So how the hell did Mikey get here so fast? Mike, you don't understand. Yes, I do. Monsters, Inc. goes back to the interrupting douchebag well a mere 10 minutes after doing it the first time. Mikey throws a snowball that should clearly be melted by now and miraculously hits Randall with it. Damn, doesn't she have a job as a receptionist? Why is she spending so much time in the hallways? No one on the work floor hits the all stop button on this door machine. Or, wait. Are you saying there is no all-stop button for this thing? These monsters did zero planning ahead when building this factory. It's weird how many Pixar movies end up in a giant factory of some sort, where the heroes have to navigate unthinking and unfeeling machinery. <laughs> there was no reason whatsoever for this door storage facility track to be laid out like a theme park ride. Who's door? There it is! All by itself, so it can be easily identified. Make her laugh! What? Sully! Just do it! Oh. Ow! <laughs> 
I still contend this is total nonsense after her crying caused the blackout before. Also, doors somehow can get powered up without all the stuff from the scare floor, which makes everything nice and tidy and convenient for this adventure. Come on, we gotta find another door! Mikey and Sully manage to find another kid's closet door in the very next beach house they run into. Look! Whose door? Wow, there are 10 billion doors in here, and you manage to leave and return within two rows of Boo's door each time? F*** you, movie. Why doesn't Randall just camp out in front of Boo's door? There's no need to chase these guys throughout the door warehouse, is there? We lost them! <sighs> God damn it. <laughs> Fucking what? There they are! It's amazing in this giant place anything Sully is looking for can be found within seconds. Naturally, some of these door factory tracks move faster than others, because Sully needed to catch up to Randall. You've been number one for too long! Randall gives us a perfect example of monologuing three years before The Incredibles even coined the phrase. Alright, come on, I wanna play. Let's see the old stuff here. Yeah, there's definitely time for this. Meanwhile, Boo's parents have had the neighbor kid thrown in jail on suspicion of kidnapping. But hey, baseball, everyone. Yep, that's Nemo. And that's the Pizza Planet truck. Yep, you're observant. What do you want, a cookie? Go start a YouTube channel and do it consistently. Mama, now the gator got in the house. Wait, there's a kid's closet door in this trailer? Also, luckily for the heroes, they threw Randall into a place where he would immediately get his comeuppance, and he couldn't just do exactly what they did to get back. And while we're on the subject, why don't Bigfoot and the Abominable Snowman do the same thing, and just come home to Monstropolis? When the door lands in the station, cut the power. You'll have the child and the criminals responsible for this whole mess. How does he know that? He's a character in the movie. He's not watching all the bullshit we just watched, right? Right? No one sees these fingers. Help! Every CDA person and water news fall for this and run away from the door. This is an accident, but as it turns out, totally necessary to the plan to expose Waternoose's evil plot. Well, I don't know about the rest of you guys, but I spotted several big mistakes. But this is exactly what our intern Kyle says every time we watch a movie. And this is why he doesn't get to write sins with us. It's because of your attitude, Kyle. The Monsters Incorporated is dead! I wish. Instead, you're not gonna believe this. We actually get a prequel in about ten years. Two and a half years of undercover work were almost wasted. It took you two and a half years to figure out what was going on here? And why were you investigating them in the first place? There wasn't anything shady going on until recently, if the movie I just watched is to be believed, especially with the shortage of screen that this very movie's plot is contingent upon. Wouldn't an abundance of screen be cause for alarm? I realize I'm more prone than the average bear to notice stuff like this, but the deliberateness of this old lady's sweater boobs is making me uncomfortable. No cops or parents of this girl who has been missing for a really long time are in this room or even close enough to hear the commotion in this room. Oh look, Jesse from Toy Story 2 and the bouncy ball. This is back in the time when Pixar actually wanted you to notice their Easter eggs. Oh yeah, and Finding Nemo again. Oh, testing, testing. This child should still be screaming bloody murder right now. So the movie ends with the positive note that they can merely get kids laughs to power the city. But I'm guessing the idea of a monster coming into your bedroom to do stand-up is still pretty scary. And you're gonna have a way harder time getting those laughs than you did those scares, even if they are ten times more powerful. Which is convenient as hell, by the way. So the first rule of comedy is punchline does not mean hit the child. This is the first rule. And it's not only not going to improve anyone's comedy, it's actually about preventing child abuse. Which is an amazing cause, but one I'd hope these folks already support. Gallagher Monster. You know, it only works if you have every piece. Which means this whole thing is impossible, but whatever. Happy ending is at least an ending. Ooh. Kitty! Okay, damn it. I'm not made of stone. That's worth a sin subtraction. Damn it. And while that definitely deserves a sin subtraction, is Sully just gonna keep visiting Boo throughout the years? Does Boo go crazy trying to tell people she has a monster who comes by every night and makes her laugh? Does she get tired of him visiting when she's a teenager? Does it become like the Toy Story series when the kid finally has to put away childish things and become an adult? Happy ending with lots of questions there. Then put your little hand in mine There ain't no hill or mountain we can't climb I have to dribble. If I give it to you, you just shoot. You're a chucker. Chuck. That's right, every time you get the ball, you shoot. Looking back on the track for a little green back. Got to find just the kind of loser my mind. May the best monster win. I plan to. Shut the f up, Donnie. Please be a secret door. Please be a secret door. Please be a secret door. Yay. They look like good, strong hands. Don't 
What's this? What's this? There's color everywhere. Les rêves des amoureux sont comme le bon vin. Oh, you know did... what? Let's watch my favorite part again. Shall we? I'm gonna get your ass to Mars. I'm gonna get your ass to Mars. What? I'm gonna get your ass to Mars. I'm gonna get your ass to Mars. I'm gonna get your ass to Mars.